Today I'm speaking to Peter Metius. He is a Chinese policy expert out of the US and he's talking about the challenges and impact the Chinese government poses on the world. And what's the purpose of your visit and tonight's presentation? Well, I'm here on a speaking tour sponsored by, by the US State Department, but my views are my own. And mostly here, I'm here to talk about China and in particular the, the issue of the Chinese Communist Party's political interference in democratic states. And uh, what, what do you think is the real threat from uh, the Chinese Democratic, uh, sorry, the Chinese um, Communist Party? It's really about the integrity of our political systems and their ability to function in a, in a transparent and open manner and to keep, to keep values as a part of, the way, part of the way we govern our countries. If nothing else, we consider things like freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of association, the rule of law, constitutionalism, academic freedom to be core pieces of our system, not threats to be managed or eliminated. And, and how, are you, how are you finding that uh, the, the current government in China is, is any different to what it's been in the last, say, five years? It's made clear its, its heritage and its communist roots, and it's simply brought those things out into the open in a way that we have to address because it's so explicit, in a way that it hasn't been under the previous leaders like Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin. It was there, but it wasn't necessarily rammed down our throats the way that Xi Jinping has, has proclaimed the Chinese dream and the, sort of the move to, to push China to a kind of great power status. What, what do you think Australia should be looking at doing? In Australia, there's a lot of talk about a China choice being forced upon it. And I like to think of it as being two different choices. The first is a choice that China will push on Australia. And that is, if you want to continue a beneficial trading relationship, then you're going to have to surrender your political sovereignty. And that means, in some sense, the integrity of Australian democracy will be pushed down. As long as ideology, whether sort of democratic in the United States, and communists in, in China remain a key part of the competition, at some point there's likely to be a U.S. choice that's pushed on Australia, saying, are you with us or against us? Australia can push both of those choices off if they effectively implement the sort of counter-interference legislation and, and push forward with a very difficult challenge of how do you draw the sort of legal red lines about what is unacceptable and how do you have a civil and democratic conversation about the terms of engagement with China. And if that's done, then you can preserve Australia's political integrity and I think push off both of those, those decisions from, from China and the United States, at least down the road. I also would say that I think it's, it would be a bit irresponsible for the United States to, make, to force Australia to make a choice about China before the US has even made it itself. And that's really the key issue. So as long as the U.S. hasn't made that choice, Australia, I think, is, is in the clear. What do you see poses a bigger challenge to the world? Uh, if China stays the way it is currently as a, um, as a communist party, or if it changes over to, to being more democratic or some other form of party? The difference between a, a, a CCP-governed China and a democratic China is that a CCP China is going to view things in black and white and it's going to be hostile to particular values. A democratic, democratic system can interact with other democratic states in the gray. It doesn't have to be black or white. It's not war or peace. And as a result, a democracy can make peace without surrendering. I'm Bess Tedros for Undercurrent.